Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, factoring and applications lesson two, common factors and grouping. Uh, common factors is kind of similar to a, a greatest common factor thing, but sometimes those factors uh, can be um, binomials as well. Okay, and when we get into factoring by decomposition, we kind of have to have the, an idea of this and definitely have to have an idea of uh, factoring by grouping because factoring by grouping is one of the key steps in factoring uh, by decomposition, okay, which is coming in a, in a lesson or two, uh, again, as a review. So, okay. so away we go. Uh, as you can see, it says in certain circumstances, the greatest common factor may be a binomial rather than a monomial, kind of like I just exactly what I just said, right, like right there. Uh, this particular type of factoring is part of a process uh, for factoring. Uh, trinomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So now you can see that that a term, that first term in front of the x squared is something other than one, okay? It's not equal to one. So, and then that's what it says, next lesson. So I guess in the next lesson, we get to uh, go over factor by decomposition again. Factor the following polynomials by removing the greatest common factor. Well, in this case, there's not a monomial that is a greatest common factor, but you can see that this x plus seven is common between both terms, which means that that x plus seven can be factored out. I'm gonna move that down a little bit just so you can remember what the process is. Okay, so when we're factoring out, we're gonna divide each of these terms by x plus seven. Divide by x plus seven. These, as a full binomial in brackets, will cancel. Can't just cancel part of a binomial. And this will cancel, leaving me with 4x minus 3. Okay. Hopefully, you can see that. If we move on to question B, we have 7 times 3 minus 2y and plus 2y, 3 minus 2y. So you can see that these two things are common between both, which means that can be factored out, 3 minus 2y. If I divide by 3 minus 2y, this is gonna cancel and this is gonna cancel. That's gonna leave me with 7 plus 2y. Done. Okay. Question C, 9a times 4a plus 1 plus 4a plus 1, and they're kind enough to put these in brackets for us. You can see this is common and this is common. So when I factor that out, remember I'm dividing. So I'm going to divide by 4a plus 1. I'm going to divide by 4a plus 1. Remember, when we divide, these will cancel, leaving me with 9a. But 4a plus 1 divided by 4a plus 1 is equal to 1, okay? That is the most common mistake that happens uh, at this point in a factoring question. Okay, so be very, very careful there. Example number two or lesson two, or example two, A, uh, factor the following and write your answer in simplest factored form. 3y plus two times 5y plus one plus 3y plus two times 4y. So you can see this is common between the both. So that's going to be my factor. I'm gonna have three y plus two. And then I'm gonna be left with five y plus one plus four y plus four y. Now here, this part here says right answer in simplest factored form. That's a hint that sometimes there might be another last step. Three y plus two 5y and 4y are common terms, like terms, 9y plus 1. So you have to combine that, uh, that like term. Question B, 3a times a minus 6 minus 9 times a minus 6. a minus 6 you can see as a factor, a minus 6. That leaves me with 3a minus 9. But hold on, wait a minute. Both 3a and 9 divide by 3. So I can factor out a 3 from this term. So this is going to be a minus 6. I'm going to factor out a 3. That's going to leave me a minus 3. And then generally, 
we would always write a monomial at the beginning of our factors, a minus six, a minus three, okay, instead of somewhere stuck in the middle, All right? Example C, oh, example C and example D. So remember in yesterday's lesson or the other lesson, we talked about uh, factoring out a negative value to make the binomials look the same. Well, look how similar this is to this, right? If I divide this one by negative one, this is gonna become a minus five. So this negative one is gonna multiply to that or divide by that plus five to be a minus five. And this is gonna flip the other way, x minus five. Well, I'll show you the intermediate step. Technically, the intermediate step looks like this. If I'm dividing by negative one, then this would be negative five plus x. And then I can rewrite that as x minus five, just the other way around. So now I have two x times x minus five, minus five times x minus five. You can see that x minus five is my factor, this and this, leaving me with two x minus five. Question D, 20 x, x minus three minus four times three minus x. Look, there's that thing idea, that same idea again. If I factor out a negative one, this is gonna flip x minus three. This negative and this negative, those are gonna become positive. So now it's gonna be 20 x, x minus three. Oops, no bracket there. <coughs> Plus four bracket x minus three. There's my common factor, x minus three. Doesn't matter whether it's the front or the back. I think I, I wrote it in the bad spot, so I'm just gonna move it over here. There we go. Then I have left over 20x plus four, but look, both 20 and four divide by four. So I have to factor out a four. That's gonna give me five x plus one. And of course my x minus three, but I'm gonna write this in a better order, the coefficient or the constant out front, x minus three, 5x plus 1. So that negative trick is going to come in handy. And like I said in the last lesson, you're going to need it in order to, to move on with some of these factoring questions. Okay. Factor by grouping is a bit of a different process. This process is right in the middle of factoring by decomposition. So once you begin and do a first couple of steps with factor by decomposition, the next step, one of the next steps, is factor by grouping. So factor by grouping uh, is going to occur when you have four terms. Okay? And basically, once you have your four terms, you're going to make a T. You're going to make two groups. You're going to make a group out of the first two terms and a group out of the second two terms. So I have this group and I have this group. That's why it's called factor by grouping. Create some groups and then factor. So at this point, I'm gonna look at my first group and say, what's the greatest common factor between x squared and three x? You should be able to see that I can factor out an x. When I factor out an x or divide by x, divide each term by x, divide by x, divide by x, x squared by x is gonna give me x, three x divided by x is gonna give me three, x plus three. Then I go to my second group and I do the same thing. <coughs> what's the greatest common factor between 6x and 18? And hopefully you can see that they both divide by six. So I'm gonna divide by six. So I'm gonna factor out a six, and in this case, a positive six plus six. 6x six divided by six is x, 18 divided by six is three. Now with factoring by grouping, you know if you've done the first step correctly, if this is the same as this, Okay, those have to be the same. If those aren't the same, something's wrong and you have to back up. Now I can factor, taking out a common factor, just like I've been doing up here, right? This was common, so I factored it out. This was common, so I factored it out. So here, x plus three is common. That's gonna be a factor, x plus three. What am I left with? I'm left with x plus six. 
That's factor by grouping, okay? Or T factor, it's called T factor. When I was taught, it was called T factor because you make this T there, okay? You make a T. Question B, I'm not gonna do all, I'm not gonna do all six of these. I'll do B and then we'll, we'll do a bit of jumping around. 8x squared minus 2x plus 12x minus 3. I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to draw my t, make my two groups. My greatest common factor of 8x squared and 2x is 2x. When I divide 8x, I'm going to move that down a bit. When I divide 8x by 2x, I get 4x. When I divide 2x by 2x, I get 1. Over here. My greatest common factor between 12x and 3 is 3. So I'm going to divide each of these by 3. That's my factor, positive, positive 3. 12 by 3 is 4x. 3 by 3 is 1, minus 1. I do my double check. These are the same. So that's one factor, 4x minus 1. My other factor, 2x plus 3. Okay, so let's do C, C or D. Let's, I don't think it matters. They're both kind of the same. C and D are very, both very similar. So let's, uh, let's do C because it's right up here. We have 8A squared minus 4A minus 10A plus five. So factor by grouping, I'm gonna make my T, make my two groups, boom, done. I'm gonna look at my first two, my first group. Greatest common factor between 8a squared and 4a is 4a. So when I divide 8a squared by 4a, I get 2a. When I divide 4a by 4a, I get 1. Looking at the second half, my greatest common factor between 10a and 5 is 5, but it has to be a minus 5. If this is ever minus, this needs to be minus. So if I divide by negative five, negative 10a divided by negative five is plus two a. When I divide five by positive five, plus five by negative five, I get minus one. Check to make sure those are the same. That's one factor, two a minus one. My other factor, four a minus five. I don't think I'm going to do D. D is very similar. You should give it a shot. Uh, if you do D, then you should be able to get 2A minus 3 and 3A minus 1. And if you do E, uh, E is a little bit, E is a little bit different. We'll do E. It's not too, not too bad. PQ plus PR minus SQ minus SR. I'm going to draw my T. My greatest common factor of PQ and PR is P. That's going to leave me with Q plus R. Greatest common factor between SQ and SR is uh, S, and it has to be negative, right? Minus. So that minus minus, that's going to give me Q. Negative S by negative S is going to give me plus R. Those are the same. Q plus R. P minus S. P minus S. Okay. And then we have F. F's a bit of a different one, only because sometimes they like to throw these curveballs at you uh, and have you think really hard. So if we wanted to try and factor this by grouping, our first step would be to draw our T. And then we would look for a greatest common factor between 5x squared and 18y squared. And notice that there isn't one. So that's really going to mess us up. We look over here, I could get a common factor of like 3x out of those, but that's not really going to help us if this first one doesn't factor. So what we do is we just rearrange it so that maybe it does work for us. Because I can see, well, this 5x squared uh, might work better, might work better with this 15xy, this y squared might work better over here. So we're going to just, we're just going to play around. And this is a bit of a luck. A lot of luck, but uh, yeah, a bit of a luck of the draw. If this doesn't factor the way it's written, swap these two and see what happens, All right? So basically that's what we're gonna do. 5x squared plus 18y squared. No, I just wrote the same thing. Don't want the same thing. 
I want minus 15xy squared plus 18y squared minus 6x. Then let's give it a whirl. Here's my t. There's my t. Greatest common factor of 5. <coughs> Greatest common factor of 5x squared and 15xy is going to be 5x. That's going to give me x minus 3y squared. Greatest common factor of 18y squared and 6x is 6 plus 6. That's going to give me 3y squared minus x. Oh, but wait a minute. Those are very similar, right? But we have to do that negative trick thing. So I'm going to factor out a negative one here. That's going to give me x squared. Not sorry, not squared. It's going to give me x minus 3y squared. And when I multiply it to this positive 6, this is going to be minus 6 x minus 3y squared. Now it matches my other side. So I can see that this is my common factor. 3 x minus 3y squared. My other factor comes from 5x and minus 6. Done. Okay. Now, sometimes factors in questions aren't that easy to work with. And the reason I'm prefacing that is because our next page well, look at those kinds of questions, right? Those kinds of questions, they all contain fractions. So we have to know how to factor out fractions because it's gonna help us later. Basically, if we can have an integral polynomial, which means a polynomial with only integers, we're gonna be able to work with that significantly easier. So we're gonna try and factor out fact fractions so that it works for us, okay? So here's an example of a factored polynomial that factors out a fraction of one half. So it's one half x squared minus three x is actually equal to one half x times x minus six. Now we could expand this and it should equal this. That's how you can check all your factors is by expanding them and see if you get back to where you started. But how, how do we go from something like this to something like this when we're factoring out a fraction? So I'm gonna attempt to show you this process uh, through some of the examples. So just follow along, I guess, and do your best. I know fractions are always an issue with students. So in question A, they give us the hint. They say, you know what, we're going to factor out a one third X. So we're going to factor out a fraction. Remember, when we're factoring, we're dividing, right? So this answer, this answer is X plus 12. I'll fill it in right now, X plus 12. Well, you should be able to see if I'm going to divide one third x squared by one third x, the one thirds are going to cancel and the x squared and the x are going to reduce to x, right? So it looks kind of like this. It looks kind of like this. One third x squared divided by one third x, four x divided by one third x, okay? So I'm factoring out a one third x. I'm going to do this this division here, okay? if I divide one third by one third, those should cancel, that should equal one. If I divide x squared by x, I'm gonna get x. That's how we get the x. Now four divided by one third. So now if we're looking at the second term, four divided by one third, well, the x's will cancel. But then how does four divided by one third get us to 12? You have to remember that when I divide fractions, four divided by one third, the actual process is multiplied by the reciprocal of the second one, of the, of the fraction you're dividing by. And as I'm multiplying fractions, I need fractions, so that's four over one, and I go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. I'll put this over here, okay? So that's how it gets to 12. A okay. little bit complicated, but with some practice. Let's do, uh, let's do C. Let's do C. I don't, I'm not going to do these all. 
do them all. You can, you can play with, with some of them uh, on your own. Okay. Six plus two thirds is equal to factor of two thirds and two other things, right? So we're gonna divide by two thirds. Divide by two thirds. Divide by two thirds. Well, two thirds divided by two thirds, that's the easy one, that's just one. But six X divided by two thirds, well, the X isn't gonna simplify or reduce, so that's gonna be an X. So now I just need to think, well, what's six divided by two thirds? Well, the rule is multiply by the reciprocal, which is equal to 18 over two, which is equal to nine, nine. Okay. Now with those ones, they gave us the factor. So it was pretty easy to determine which, what to factor out. Okay. If you want more, or if you want me to do these two more, remind me in class uh, as we talk about lesson two, what are we in lesson two? As we talk about lesson two, if you'd like me to do those, I would happily go through those as a couple of examples in class uh, once we get started. Okay. Example five, complete the factoring uh, and check mentally by expanding the factored form. So we don't need to check it. So if you wanna check it, you can just multiply it out and you should get back to exactly where you were. But if we're looking at a minus one sixth a squared and we end up with six and a, that means we had to have factored out an a and we had to have factored out this one sixth. Oops, maybe I'll write it this way. So it's just asking you to find the factors. Well, what's the factor here? What's the factor in B? Well, one half, one half pi r squared became r. So I had to have factored out an r and I had to have factored out this one half, one half. You could write it like that, assuming that that's the line for the fraction or you could write it like this too. That's also perfectly acceptable. And then question C, so question C, what do you think our factor is gonna be? And we're trying to get rid of fractions, right? So we're gonna have to divide or factor out two fifths, two fifths. Two fifths divided by two fifths, that's gonna give us one over here. But now we have to figure out this one, two X divided by two fifths. Two divided by two fifths is two divided by two fifths is two times five over two, which is 10 over two, which is five. So this should be five X. Okay. And then example six, let's do B. I'll save A. If somebody wants me to go over that in class, we'll do A, but for now let's do B. So if we're trying to get rid of all of the fractions, we have two fractions here, but these are very similar, frac not similar fractions, but they, we can see that we can make some equivalent fractions fairly easily, right? So uh, the, best, the best rule of thumb is to divide by or factor out the smallest fraction, and then hopefully uh, it gets rid of them all. So one sixth is our smallest fraction. So I'm gonna factor out a one sixth. I'm also gonna factor out an X because I see there's X's in all of them and the lowest exponent is X to the power of one. That's gonna lead me with something. Now, remember there's a one here, we never write it. So one, one divided by one sixth is equal to one times six over one, which is equal to six over one or just six. 6x squared. One third divided by one over six is equal to one third times six over one, which is equal to six over three, which is equal to two plus two x. And then one sixth x divided by one sixth x should leave us with one. Okay. If you take a shot at a, uh, then your answer should be one over four. Uh, a bracket eight plus a squared. Okay, if you wanted to take a shot at that and see how well you do. 
Well, that takes us to the end of lesson two. Um, yeah, so assignment will be posted or noted on Scalantis somewhere, or I'll tell you what it happens to be once we get there. Uh, and we'll, we'll see you next time.